Okay, yes, it is recording now. So, like I said, this is the website we'll be testing today. So, if we go back to IntelliJ, and I said I'll be using this, we've already written how to create our features. Okay. Can everybody still hear me, please? Just send a message because I got a pop-up that I might have been logged off. If you can hear me, please just leave a comment, please. Yes, thank you. So this is what we're creating. So we're going to be navigating to the website. I've written that twice. And we're going to be filling the registration form then we click on the button and then we complete the form is completed successfully so that's when what we'll be doing today and i said for us to be able i've already created a form step definition here which is this i'm going to delete this to be honest So I'm going to start with how to set up the step definition on here. When you click into this, you see that this line, which is line four, or actually from line four to line seven, they are still gray, which means that they are not linked yet. And I did remember last week that if you click on this top from just after this um, hammer button where it says feature form, if you click into it, it will show you edit configurations. When you click into that, all we just want to check is our main class, we've got this in there. And then for the glue, which is most important, we've got the step depths there. The reason I've got step depths here is when you go to your test runner, this should match because this is our glue as well. So that's why that should link there. And before I continue, actually, I'll send you the new POM that we should have updated on all our POM XML. So hold on. I'll put that in the chat. And I'll point out to you what I missed out the last time. Oh yeah, I'm not able to paste in the chat, interesting. Okay, let me go to Telegram. I'll paste in into Telegram for everyone because I'm not sure why I'm not able to paste in the chat. So just bear with me. So I've pasted the new POM we should have. I've pasted it in Telegram. Although it's divided in bots, you need to paste it as one whole. And then I'll go back to IntelliJ and show you what the issue was last week. So I, I did say I was going to let you know where the issues are and how I got to resolve it. So basically, from line 54, I'm going to highlight from line 54 up to line 66. You see where it says Selenium support and Selenium Chrome driver. I didn't have those dependencies in there. They were missing. And that's why when, even though I had my Chrome driver opening, it wasn't clicking and you could see how many web pages we went to to try and automate them and none of them worked so that was why that was one of the reasons why we had the, that issue even though we did initiate 
this web driver at the top, although I've changed the way I've initiated it now. So basically, let me slash this out. This was what we had last week. So we had this last week, and then I also put the web driver here. So basically what was happening was, because I had two web drivers here, the system was confused thinking, where, which of the web drivers do you actually want me to use? So even though I kept running it, 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 it wasn't responding. So those were one of the reasons why we were having those issues last week. And then someone did ask a question online. Um, in, then, because I had the web driver being called as well there, then obviously it kept recognizing, I had two web drivers, so it was getting quite confused on which one should be calling which. And so that was another reason. And then someone also left a message on Telegram. Um, I didn't respond purposely because that was one of the things we dealt with last class. And so people should pay attention to the class. And I did leave a comment as well on Telegram telling you how to resolve the issues. So they said they were still getting error messages when they upload either the test ng, test runner, or the poms. I said, what you need to do, click on Marvin here. You click on it, that will re-import your settings. And as you see at the bottom, right at the bottom, it's showing that my dependencies are resolving. Once it completes, resolving, then you need to shut down your IntelliJ and reopen it back up. That should sort out any error messages that you have on there. And I did leave a message on Telegram as well, because when I had about two, three people message me about the same thing, I left a message letting you know the step as well that I went through to get that sorted. But I saw a message saying the Tutor never told us what to do, which is the wrong information. So you need to read up on Telegram or watch the videos so you know what to do. So that aside, what we were then going to do was, I was going to go into, so I've told you the two ways I was able to resolve the issues. Now we're going to continue. So once you click into this gray, you should have, the bulb was showing earlier. Yep. When you click into that, it says create step definition. When you click on that, as you can see, I've got my step defs here. What I would like to do is actually, I'll create a new one, so then I'll delete the other one that is there. So we'll have, I'll, I'll use a capital letter here. So I'll click the name as form step devs, and then be very careful with your file type as well. Sometimes you might have it as Java 8. Make sure you change this to Java. That's what you want to use. And then your file location, just be aware as well that is in the right file location and you click OK. So this has created a new step definition for me. And if I go back to my form.features, you see that my given is no longer gray. Then I'll complete the remaining. You can see the bulb is showing. Then all I want to do is click on create all step definition. So I want to link it to with the other ones. And you can see that every other thing here is linked. When I go back to forms, then this is no longer gray. But if you notice on my left-hand side, 
I'm not sure it might be someone's right hand side or left hand side. Just write or highlight it under the step definition. You notice that what I've just created now, which is in the capital letter, is out of the step definition. So be aware, it's just directly with step runner. We don't want it that way because we're meant to be linking it to our step definition, which is the highlighted one, because that is our glue. If it's not linking to our glue, then this one I'm highlighting would not work. So I'm going to drag and drop it into my step definition. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So let me drag and drop. And I click on refactor. So you can see that this is now linked into my step definition. So when I close step definition, it no longer shows because it's inside my step definition, which is my glue. So now the next step is to set up our web driver so that we can then navigate into it. And what we need to do is initiate our web driver. And as you can see, the web driver displays straight away because we have added the package for it in our POM XML. So that would be driver, the driver. And then I'm going to be doing two different things here. As of the last class, I told you how to download your Chrome driver and move it into your, your project. So you create a new file, you input it into your new file, and you go to your project and put the driver into your project. If you remember vividly what I did, so let me go into my file explorer. And so all I did was link into my project here because I've already downloaded my Chrome driver, which was downloaded, but then I wanted to link it into the project itself. So I went into the project files itself. So let's see. This is where my project is stored, and I'm using this at the moment. Let's see. Let's see. And then I'll just show you how to to know where your project file is as well. So let me go back into Blue Sky. So this is my project here. So I should have, you can see once I've highlighted, it's showing the full project file. So I've got Blue Sky Citadel training. That's what I need to look for in my file explorer. So, yeah, so that's what I'm looking for there. And then using my SLC, the test, because you're a tester. And it should be in my resources. So this is the driver. This is why I pasted that. So I just moved my driver once I created the pro the, the new and they moved it here. So that moves straight into my project itself. That's because I didn't want to go through the long route of having to go back out all the time to copy and paste the Chrome driver into my project. I can just do it easily from my project. So so we need to initiate our Chrome driver, which is systems. And as you start typing, you see that it gives you options. Dot set property. And then what are we setting our property? We want our Chrome driver, which is our, so we've got the web driver.
and then we want to copy the part for our Chrome driver here. You, you, you right click and then you click on copy and then you paste it in there. So we've called our, our Chrome driver into our code. And then now we want to make sure that the web driver works. So what I'll then do is I'll call my driver equals to new Chrome driver and then semicolon at the back of it. And then now we want to, we're going to be navigating to the website. And I said the website is this. So I'm going to copy this web URL and I'll go back into IntelliJ. So that will be driver. We're telling our driver to do what? To get, and it's telling us that it's a string. So our string is the web address. So this is our web address. So what I'm going to then do, just to double check that everything I've done so far is correct, I'm going to run. And for you to run, I said you can do it two different ways. One, right on the feature file. So our feature file at the moment is called form.feature. I'll right click on it and then I'll click on this run. The second option is to go right into the form, which is where you wrote your scenario and then click and also you can run. So I've clicked on run there. Yeah, he's initiating the test now. I just want to make sure that the URL is actually displayed. Okay, so as we can see, that URL actually displays. So, but it didn't display the full length or the full page. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to tell it to maximize. And for me to maximize that, what you need to do is store your driver dot manage We're telling the window to do what? To maximize. And if I run it now, you see that that will maximize the page. Okay, so that is fine. Now, what we then want to do is, before I go into us speaking the element, I want to talk about different things that you might hear about at work. Sometimes they might tell you in your project to write a comment. Like for instance, when I was going to write about how to get the driver to navigate. They might tell you to give us the steps of how you set up your project. And you can actually write your comments in here, whereby it also does not disrupt your codes. And for you to be able to do that, you need to use this symbol here, this symbol, and then you can write, I am, hold on. Sorry. You can then write, I am navigating to the website. So that does not disrupt anything. If I run this still, this will still run because I'll put a double slash, which means that I want it, I just want to let anybody know exactly what I am doing. 
So that's what that does with regards to putting a comment. So sometimes they might tell you to put a comment either because it's a regression test, it's a smoke test, and you want to put it in that code. Another way that you can actually, if also at work, if they tell you that you need to do regression or smoke testing, you can also have what is called a tag. And for you to have a tag, a tag is this initial, then you can put regression, you can put at smoke, you can put any of this as much as you want as well. As far as is that scenario they've told you to write about, you can put this up here so that whoever sees it or when they are trying to run your build, they know that this particular scenario you've written is a regression or is a smoke testing that you're doing on it. So that's another thing I wanted to point out. Now we're going to go straight into how to get inspect your elements. So now the first thing we do once we get onto the website is to inspect your element, you click right into whatever you're trying to do. As you can see, it's like if I'm going to type something, I've got that cursor telling me that I should enter something in it. So I right click into that and you can see where it says inspect. You click on that. And then you can see this highlighted information here. What I'll do is let me move this to the side so that we can see. Yeah. If you can actually see it highlighted, what you can also do is click on this um, square and the arrow going up. Then you put it, click on exactly where you want it to be. Yeah, the reason I've done that is I think my laptop is a bit small, so I couldn't see the element itself. So this is the element we're trying to work with here. Okay. I'm going to move it right at the bottom. My laptop is a bit smaller. And I need you to see the elements. Come in. Let me see if I can make some adjustments. Yes. Yeah. That's fine. Because while I'm doing that as well, I'll be trying as well to teach you how to write your own elements. So I click into that, and this has highlighted to me. And once I click on the highlight as well, you can see that it's highlighting blue here, yeah, which means that and on this particular elements, we've got different sort of elements that you can use. One, we've got what is called a class. Class as the same is called a class name as well in your element. So wherever you see a class name is the same thing as a class. You've also got an ID as well. So right at the front page, you've got a class as well as an ID. When you right click into that, you can see where you've got copy. You can then use either a copy selector or copy expert. So in total on this particular field, which is the single line text, you can use four different types of elements. But for you to know which one exactly you need to use, you need to use the one that says one of one. So what I'm going to show you right now is for you to know which one to pick. So at the moment, you can see this highlighted at the bottom here. I'll raise it up a bit so you can see what I'm trying to say. Let me see if I can raise this up. OK, I hope you can see anyway. So here you can see the highlighted, it says 17 matches which means on this page, you've got 17 matches of a class. If you try to use this, it would not respond because there's 17 of this class on this page. 
So what we're trying to look for is one of one. Then let's search for the ID. Let's see if we've got one of one of that ID. And this shows that we have one of four as well, which means the same thing that we had earlier. With your class name, okay, before I get into that, if we right click and go to copy selector, let's paste that in here as well. As you can see, this shows us that we have one of one. So this is really at the moment our best option to use. But let's see what we've got for expert as well. And for expert as well, we've got one of one. Okay. So um, some people would use the expert, some people will use the CSS selector. I tend to like to use CSS selector because it doesn't change as often as an expert would. But if you haven't got a CSS selector, sometimes you might not have a CSS or the way the CSS selector is not um, on some pages, you know, and uh, sometimes you might not have an ID or a class on it, and you might have to use the expert, then go ahead and use that. But if you've got like one ID or one CSS selector, then it's best to use those because they, they hardly change as opposed to an expert. So at the moment, I'm going to be using a CSS selector on here. So I'll delete that and I'll copy the CSS selector. So I'll go into this. And so I've got filling the form. So I'm going to put a space in between line 23 and line 24 so that I can write my code. So that would be driver. What am I going to tell driver to do? I want the driver to find element. And then I'll explain two different things here. As you can see, it's giving me a lot of options, but find element is what you need when you want to call your driver to do anything for you. So at the moment, I've got find elements and I've got find elements. As I explained last week, find elements is for singular. You're telling it to do one singular action. Find elements, you're telling it to do multiple actions at the same time. That's what find elements is. So right now we want this to do one action. So I'm going to be using find element. And how am I finding the element? I've just mentioned that we're going to be using by CSS selector. That's what we copied. And then I'm going to paste that in there and then semicolon at the back. I will not continue this. I'll run it so that, no, actually, I'm not going to put at the back because I tend to do that mistake quite a lot. And I will just quickly show you why I'm not putting a semicolon because I need a text to go in here. So I'm, I'm meant to send keys because when you want a text to go into a particular place or field, then we use send keys. So that's what I'm going to be sending now. So I'm going to go back here and then I'll say dot, and it's giving me that option send keys. And because we're testing, I'm going to be writing testing. And I'll, I'll give you um, the reason I tend to use testing a lot, except you've been giving data, all this, sort of information here, which is like testing, when you're writing an email and all of that, stick to testing a lot of the time. So if it's an email, for example, you can just use test, testing at test.com, for example. I'll tell you the reason I did that. When I initially started work at my previous place of work, I would normally use random messages or random names or something thereabouts. And for whatever reason, at that point in time, my developers, normally there's a way they set up the account whereby is, is closed because we have like three different environments. So before it can get, so you have your, the, the developers have what we call 
the developer's um, like URL. So they would do all their coding and all everything on that URL. Once they feel that it is stable, they'll move it to the testing environment, which is for us testers to test. Once that is stable, they'll move it to the stage environment, which is for the UAT, which is like the users that are going to be using that particular product for them to test it before we then move it to the production. But for whatever reason, they did not lock it down. So they left everything open to go to production, which means that the end users themselves, which is our clients, would actually receive any information you're testing on the test or the stage environment, it went straight to their mobile phone. So as I'm sending all those random pictures, it was going to a customer's phone number. And obviously, if everybody knows due to GP, GPRS or GP, whatever it is now, and data, that is a data breach, which caused a big problem at work. And even though I started, and obviously I was of the angle of you guys, you, gave, you should have given me data and all of that, but they came back with you are a tester and you should have known what to use. So that's why now, anytime I'm testing, I just stick to testing. So if anybody receives it, they can just see test or testing, or I'm testing this website. I don't go and pick random anything from anywhere. I just stick to testing all the time. If I'm going to be inserting like an image, I use a blank paper. I don't find any, any sort of image to send because there might be mistakes along the way and you will still get pulled for it because they, they will tell you, you should know as a tester. So that's why I'm using this. Sorry, I ranted a bit, but I thought it was an information that should be shared. So now what I'm then going to do is I'm going to run this, which is where we had our issue the last time, just to make sure that this actually works. Fantastic. So if you can see right at the, in that page, you can see the message shows test. So this is fine. Now, what we're doing is we need to select, even though I have a pre-populated information here, sometimes if you don't really want to do a lot of work, if you have a pre-populated information, like I have one here, I could just leave it because I know that it works. All they want to know is that it works. But if you don't have anything in there, like if you have select all, then we need to work with selecting one of the three here. So I'll just inspect this element as well. And so here as well, so let's start getting interactive so that I'm not the only one telling, or, um, telling you what to do. So now I want people to tell me what they, we could easily use in this particular elements that we've got. What can they see? What can you use right now on here? If you put your messages on the chat box, So this is the element is here. I've highlighted it. Can you tell me what we can use to find our elements in this particular page I've just opened? Yep, someone said ID. Yes, that's good. What else can we see? There are actually three, three types of elements you can pick on this front page right now. Um, I'm not sure what one o f one means. Yep, there's a class as well. Thank you. There's still something else.
Okay, that, yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Yep, yeah, you're absolutely right. So yeah, we've got ID, and like I always say, just how I come up with this is I just click Control down and F, then I can paste into this field here so that I know how many matches I've got. So if we were saying we're going to be using the ID, for instance, we've got five matches of this. So like I said before, this would not be advisable to use. Then we have got the name. And I'll do the same thing. How many have I got? I've got five of that. And as you can see, this has already shown me where one of it is. And you can see where it's highlighted. It's showing the full page on there. So which means that's not going to be also good to use. We could change it, which I would do that in a bit, but I'm just trying to give us more understanding and for you guys to actually know what you're doing as well. So I've just, um, the class as well, let's see how many we've got in that page. Oh no, this is even one of 17. Before you get to one of one of this 17, that's going to take you forever. So no, we're not even going to try that. So let's now right click and find the expert as well as the CSS selector. Yep, we've got one of one, which is good. And then let's find the CSS selector as well. Like I said, I prefer that. So hopefully that will be one of one. Yep, fantastic. So that's another one of one. So, and if you notice something, I'll just quickly show you something here, which tends to happen a lot with the experts and um, with CSS selector and ID. So I'll delete this. If you notice this, this is actually the ID. The only thing they've done there is put this sign in front and that has changed it for the CSS selector. So once you start building up yourself, a lot of the time, you don't even need to right click to go onto CSS selector. Once you have an ID that you know you can use, you can just change that straight by putting this sign in front and that changes it to your CSS selector for you. So I'll just copy that and then I'll go back to IntelliJ. And so what are we doing? We're trying to select, yes. So select gives us actually a different way of doing things. And there are two different ways in which you can write select. I'm going to show you both ways now. So one way is, so you can see where it says options, value, and you have one. So this is telling you that your value is one and there's another value to value three, but they are all options right at the start. So one way to write it is, let me go back to IntelliJ. So we can have new select, select here is in capital, yep. So, and then what are we doing? We want our driver to find the element and how to research by it by CSS selector. And I'll paste in the code and then dot. What do we find? It was select by value, which was why I was mentioning it here. You can see value equals to two. So that's how you know what value to use when you're writing your elements or when you're writing your code. So now we have, let me see, this is a yeah, dot select by value. And what value do we want to use? I think let's use three. So that's so that should pick the third one. So I'm going to run this as well and then we'll see it live on the website. Okay. 
if I scroll down a bit. Okay, let's see. Let's see what happened there. Cannot locate option with value three. So this is what it's told me here. Let me go back when I was selecting my element. I do have value, oh, I didn't have it in number three. I had it as letter three, that's why. So you can see the easy mistakes um, that can be made. I've assumed that I would have the number three, but actually in my code, I have it as letter three. So I'm going to run this again. And the more you do these things, the more you are able to read the error messages that comes up. So isn't, and like it, also as a new starter, you've got a lot of support whenever you start a job. And as you can see, that has populated it as three. I said that was one option. I'm going to tell you what the other way to write it would be. And I actually had one of my developers teach me this particular way of writing it. And I think I actually prefer those, this option as opposed to a lot of the first option I just told you. So basically what I do is I copy the X back at this point in time. I paste and then I click, I write option, which is this option, as you can see, is highlighted it for me. But what option do I want to pick? Let's pick value two at this point in time. So at this time, I'll just write that in there. And as you can see, is one of one is highlighted this for me. So when this one, I just write the normal code, which is this. So I've slashed this one out that I've just written. Then I'll just go with driver dots find element, and how do I want this to find the element by expert? And what do I want it to do? I want it to click when it gets to that. So now I'm going to run it so that you can see that it's giving us the second option. Just run that. So as you can see, that has also worked. So you've got two different ways in which you can actually write your select. So you can use the first option or the second option, whichever one you feel comfortable. I like this option because if you're at work and you have a lot of select by value and all of that, you can just, you have a lot of ways. Anyway, you, you have both options anyway basically. So now let's see what the third one is. Okay, so I'm going to be doing something now. This email password, they are send keys because we're going to be sending keys for your email and your password. So like I said, I want this to be more interactive. So I know that people actually understand what they're they're doing or what I'm teaching. So if people can go onto their, log into their website and log into this website here manually, they can find the element and actually write the code out and put it in the chat. Then we can use the code or the, I just want the element itself. You don't need to write the full driver dots, whatever, just write the element that you've picked or you've written, and then we can use it in what I'm doing right now, and we can run with your code. Is, is that something that is of interest to everybody?
Do you want to put a yes in there? Let's do a, a bit of exercise. At least we've got time today. Is that a yes or no? Could someone um, respond if it's something that we should engage in? If not, then I can continue. Okay, that's cool. Okay, let me open the web link again in case someone needs it. So this is a web link we need. So that will be HTTPS, which is this. Let me go back here. So this is the web address you need. Okay. So someone has said they've got issue downloading. At the moment, um, I'm not sure what you're downloading, but right now all I've said is go onto your, you know, your browser, open a web page, and just enter this manually. So right now we're not even telling you to work on your IntelliJ directly. I'm just saying log into this web page manually on your Chrome, and then get the element that we want to use and then we'll use that on this project that i'm working on right now because i've already done one for you which is the same keys so it's going to be the same sequence but you're just going to be changing the elements you're going to be using so you could use either an id you could use an expert you could use a css selector but i wanted to I want you to make sure that it is one of one so that it works. I'll open the elements for you. So this is it. Anybody yet? Okay, let's get on with it. What I'll do is I uh, would, okay. Um, okay, there are quite a few ones you could do yourself. I will work on the ones that um, I think you need to know, like this more to select the radio buttons. I've already taught you how to do select, and then we have the date. 
So I think someone has responded. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. That is a good one. Yeah, someone has given us one. So let's go back to IntelliJ. And so we have, so that is driver dot find element um, said by dot CSS selector. And we have the hashtag in front. And that is send keys. And that will be test at testing.com. So let's try that. Well done. If someone else can give us the next one, let's run this. Oh no, hold on. No, I need to stop that because I've mistakenly type something else in there. Let me see if it works. Okay, as you can see that worked. So thanks very much for that person. Would someone else like to try the next one? It's still the same thing. We just need another element. Oh, that's for the password. Okay, good. So let's try for the email. Same thing, so all they've done is here. Yeah, I'll just use password. Okay. So that should work as well. And then I'll teach you how to multi select, which is the next one. And so that's that. So for the multi-select is more or less almost, almost the same thing with, that's why I said, I like this code here, but you can use this code as well for multi-select. So which will be this, let's go into this. So I'll use this. I will want to multi-select, we can multi-select the three of them, or two of them, whichever one. So all we need to do is click on this and you have the values. You have your select here. So another thing that happens a lot of the time at work is even if it's a select, sometimes you might not have the select um, first stage here to tell you that this is the select button. So, and if that happens, then this code here, I'll just show you this code here. This code here, yeah, this highlighted code here that I have highlighted would not work because your developers hasn't used it as a select option for you. But this second code here, even though it hasn't in indicated it's a select, this one would always work regardless of how your developers have written or designed the web page, this would always work. 
which is why I always go for this. So I'm going to be selecting, so let's use the idea and just put the hashtag in front. We change this to a CSS selector. Okay, now, because I'm going to be using that option to, let's just pick this, expert. Um, so I want all the three options. So I want one, two, three. So I'm going to be doing the three of them. Interesting. So where's the other two? Oh, okay. So he's even giving me all the three options there. So what's the code for this one? Yeah, so this has given me the code for that one. So I can even just go straight into this option and get the code. So I think I have code that gives me one of one, two, and then three. So I'll just copy this. And then I'm going to be using the three codes. So driver, Dot find element. This is a good time to use find elements actually, because we want to select the three of them. So I'm going to be practicing with, um, no, this will work for this option, not for this. So I'll use the find elements for this options, not this one. So let me go back. Actually, I'm going to try it. I've never tried it that way. I'm going to try it. Let's see if that works. And so I've said, I'm going to take the options out because there are three. So I'm just going to use one of it and then I'll click, click. Oh, interesting. Okay, as you can see, when I clicked on click, um, when I click on the stop button, it gives me options but well, you can see that I haven't got the click here. I've got all other options, but not the click, which means that the way the code is written for find elements is actually different. We can search that to find out how to use it. I can't say right now how to actually do that straight away, but we can locate it. 16, we've got time. So let's go. Yes, and this will give me the click. And I said I wanted to click the three of them. So I've got one, two, three. So I'm just going to paste, copy and paste, and I've got one, two, and three. I'll run it. And then we'll see if that actually worked. Okay. As you can see, my three options here 
did not work. And so let me go back to IntelliJ. Let me see what the error message is this time. So it's telling me that unable to select an element with expat expression, which basically means even though, oh, I think I've got three lines. Oh, that's why. I've got three lines here. That's why. So let's delete. So I'm going to run it again. That should hopefully work. Fantastic. So that's highlighted. So which means our code is correct. And basically, with I've done, I think about five of it. The remaining ones that you've got here are literally a repetition of this. They've just been designed in different ways. But the way you get the codes are the same way or the way you write the code are the same way of what I've just read, written for about the five of them. So this radio button, the way you write the code is how you write the code for your multi-select and also write the code for your select. I taught you a simpler way to write it. So if you write it that way, I've just told you that I prefer, then you should get this as well. And this checklist as well. Then for the country, I did a select here. So you just need to do a select for the country as well. The only one I think might be a bit different. You might think, oh, what am I going to do here? But it's not really difficult because you get this drop down of the dates. You might think I'm going to be doing something different. No, it's not. All you need to do as well is send keys, which is a code. I've written here already with regards to send keys and you just enter the date. But regarding the date, you need to be aware, I'll just right click so that you know how exactly the dates are written. And that's the same format you need to enter when you're entering your send keys. So where's my... This. Okay, so they, they haven't actually written anything in particular that I can see here. So another thing I tend to do, sometimes some developers write a format for how you should write your dates in this sort of elements, but there's nothing there. So another thing I tend to do is just go on the date itself and select the date. So this is the format you need to use. 08-11-2021, the slash, the way it's been written here. So when you're sending your keys, that's how you need to send your keys. And that's about it for today. I'm not going to complete it, I'm going to give you an exercise to do to complete that website. So any questions? If anybody has got any questions, you could put it in the chat. We still have about 30 minutes, so this could be a bit more interactive if you want. If, you, if you're struggling, you could discuss it now. If not, you could always put it in the Telegram and
I'll be able to reach out or any of my other colleagues will be able to reach out and help you. Okay, if there's no question, then I'll assume that this is good night. Thanks very much to everybody that attended and we should be putting this out so that um, you'll be able, okay, I think someone has put a, Okay, if you'd like to elaborate on what you mean by, please give me a clue. I, I don't understand what that is. Um, I think I'll stop sharing at the moment because this is.